We've talked about some of your influences in your primary teacher. Uh, of course, you're a teacher yourself. Um, and I have a couple students here, in a way, to ask you a couple of questions. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe it won't be the most direct, uh, as they won't immediately be hearing your um, feedback or advice, but um, okay. through the power of uh, editing and, and <laughs> okay. uh, communication, we'll send them their, your answers. Okay. And uh, well, here's the first. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Louis. Here's Louis. Uh, also, oh. it's done, done some wonderful lessons for us on tone bass as oh, well. Oh, he Brahms is, and, and he w. is. A, he's an angel. And he's, he's the most amazing talent. Oh. Well, he, he wants a little help. Let's see. Hi, Manny. <laughs> Hi, it's so nice to see Louis. you. I hope you're well. You know, I have such great memories from our lessons together, especially on Beethoven's fourth concerto. Now I'm working on the fifth one, The Emperor. Ah. And um, I was wondering what tips you have from your years of performing it. <laughs> I have to say, I find, I find the beginning of the third movement very tricky. Um, it would be great to maybe see you perform the opening phrase <laughs> and any guidance would be very much appreciated. Oh. <laughs> well, um, shall I be um, talking? Yeah. Well, you know, well, pretend I, I'm Louis. <laughs> I have to say, first of all, for me to give Louis advice, you, you, know, you know, our lessons consisted of the following. He would come, he'd play a piece, I would say to him, uh, could you just show me what you do in measure 120 mm -hmm. because I want to copy that. Thanks, I'll see you next week. <laughs> so, so you picked up some things from him. I, I, yeah, he picked up nothing from me, but okay. I got plenty from him. Well, let's see uh, if, if any tricks to the emperor. Well, a trick, I, you know, the, I guess what I used to try and focus on mm -hmm. was two things. Mm -hmm. One was to actually practice the... the that alone because what Sasha was saying to you, waltz or dance, but the idea is to get a kind of the dance quality. But then if there's a way of and that I picked up from Fleischer because I got to play this piece with him conducting. And he said, one of the things you can think about is when the note is long, and then play as late as possible. Da -da -da -da. Mm. So, so it's a kind of snap. Now I think it's very effective. The big problem here is deciding whether do you, do you do that or not? Mm -hmm. Do you make the subito piano? I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know if that just sounds stupid, you know? I'm not sure, because that's what's printed, you know? In, in a hall, that might not project the yeah, sort of Yeah, it's hard, hard to know. It might be fine to just... If you can make make the rest. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Yeah. So maybe those differences. Otherwise, I don't know. Good luck. <laughs> you, just before that, you have a vision. Or the transition. Well, this is just my idea. Yeah, what you is know, it? that when you end of the slow movement, and then they drop to the with the horns playing the long note, and then instead of the pianist doing this, that you actually hear another piano off stage. And the pianist here just sits and listens to it. Maybe Louis could be that pianist, Austin. <laughs> well, actually, I should be that pianist, and he should be this pianist. So, so, 
But oh, how nice to see him. That's great. The other, the other thing about, about this piece, well, it's not important. It's fine. Not, not Are you sure? Not important. It's not important. Okay. If you, uh, if you insist. No, I was gonna. I was gonna say that there was, there was a wonderful story about Buzoni. Mm-hmm. Who was I the teacher of Funz? Who was so well, he's your actually grand... actually Buzoni was Egon Petri's teacher. Oh, okay. So and Petri was Munz's. So student, he's your great Munz's grand teacher. Kind. Of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you know, everyone, everyone, but everyone used to say that Buzoni was the greatest pianist ever. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the contemporaries, they all... And he played these four-hour-long concerts. Yeah, the, yeah, they all said he was... the kitchen sink into the He program. was, mis, you know, he defined the piano. Mm-hmm. But he used to play this piece, and apparently he always was in, in one position, you know. He always played like this. And then when this place came, apparently he suddenly... His head went up. That was the only time. After 30 minutes, he exactly, finally. Exactly, that he suddenly, you know, it was, ah. Must have been quite effective to see mm-hmm. that. Do you ever, when you're performing, feel like your body language could be, do you ever have a strategic body language moments where you're like, I, I could, do, or are you not that I, kind of a I showman? Don't, I, don't, I don't have that. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think about it. But I do, I do think about trying to concentrate. I mean, I, I, I feel that if I concentrate somehow, wh- whatever is natural to me, I don't look up and I don't I, shake I my head. I notice that you're here. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'd I, rather like Horowitz, it's, it's still. But, and but there is, I think there is a, a way, uh, there's a quality of concentration mm-hmm. that uh, if you're concentrated somehow, I'm Polini, Polini was one of the great exponents of that. You know, mm-hmm. what? When he played the Hammerklavier, you didn't focus on details so much. And, and you know, he plays in a very straightforward yeah, way. Yeah. It can be he cold doesn't, sometimes. Well, you could say that, but you know, you could take any four bars of a Polini performance <laughs> yeah. and say, oh, I like so much more the way this guy does it. And these four bars, mm-hmm. I like so much more, you know, the way mm-hmm. people listen now to CDs, yeah. you know, and you, you sometimes see a review that says, at 12.24. <laughs> they drop the needle. Yeah, at 12.24, yeah. there's a wonderful moment of such and such. With Polini, you can't listen that way. But when you listen to the whole thing, mm-hmm. wow. Suddenly you get, aha, this is, this is really, you know. It's like a, a, I, a, I got it. a giant building piece of architecture. It's not about yeah, going up and looking exactly. at this. Exactly, it's you not have to this get, brick. Go over there right. and then look at the whole it's castle. Not, it's yeah. not this red brick. It's the whole thing. Like for for a quarter of a century in the Brahms D minor concerto, I I did I missed that note half the time. 